Hello everyone, I'm Brittany, an educator from the DNA Learning Center, and today we're going to be discussing lactose intolerance. Now before we actually talk about lactose intolerance, I want to touch on the DNA behind it. So the first thing I want to show you is DNA or the double helix. What you notice is that it looks like two turns. That's because the structure is a double helix. When I unwind it, what you notice is there are four different colors. One, two, three, four, and they represent our nitrogenous bases, C, G, A, and T, or cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. Now, when you look at the side, you see the backbone of DNA. The backbone consists of a phosphate and a sugar. Now, do we know what the name of the sugar is in DNA? It's deoxyribose. So when you hear the full name of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, the deoxyribo actually refers to the deoxyribose sugar. Why is DNA important to begin with? Well, it's the cookbook that makes us who we are. If DNA is the cookbook, then that means that it needs to have recipes. But what are the recipes for? They're for traits. But then what are the individual recipes? When we look at this structure, this double helix of DNA, what I am now boxing in is a small segment of DNA, which is known as a gene. And genes contain the information that codes for individual proteins, which when they are expressed, give us our individual traits. A trait is just a unique characteristic that we have. One of my traits is the fact that I have curly hair. Some people mention eye color. Even the things we don't see which are inside of our body are encoded for in our genes. The trait we're going to be discussing today is that of lactose intolerance. One thing I like to do is I like to break down the words that help us understand what we're really discussing. So the two words we're going to be talking about right now are that of lactose and lactase. Lactose has an ose ending. Do we know what the ose ending tells us? It tells us what type of molecule lactose is. Do you know any other molecules that have an ose ending? Have we heard of glucose before? If you've read the ingredient label on a juice, have you seen high fructose corn syrup? The ose lets us know we're talking about a sugar. So lactose is a sugar molecule. But the question is, what type of sugar? Well, what does lac refer to? Do you have any idea? If you don't, I'll help you out because that's a little more difficult. So lac actually refers to milk. So lactose is a milk sugar. And because lactose has lac just like lactase, what do you think lactase has to do with? Well, we already know that the lac refers to milk. But what does ACE mean? ACE also helps us know what type of molecule this is. An ACE ending lets us know it's an enzyme. Now, what do enzymes do? Well, enzyme, enzymes break down molecules, enzymes build up molecules, and enzymes speed up the rate of the reaction. Now, this enzyme works on a specific molecule. What molecule do you think that is? If you said lactose, you would be correct. Now, how does this happen? The enzyme and the substrate come together. What I'm drawing now is representative of lactase. And what type of molecule is lactase? Lactase is an enzyme. So if lactase is an enzyme, then what do you think is the substrate? The substrate is lactose. And a substrate is just the molecule that an enzyme acts on. 
Do you see how I'm drawing the lactose so it fits with the lactase perfectly? This is important. There needs to be lock and key binding, a perfect fit between an enzyme and a substrate. Now what happens is they form the enzyme substrate complex. And it sounds like a big word, but all it means is that they're joined together. And when they join together, what happens is the substrate undergoes a conformational change. Now, the lactase itself does not change. So lactase can be used again in further reactions or in a later reaction. However, we no longer have lactose. What we have now are two smaller sugar molecules. These sugar molecules are glucose and galactose. So what are the two molecules that result from the breakdown or digestion of lactose? Glucose and galactose. And these are smaller sugars, so they're easier to be absorbed. Now, if I were to ask you, when we're young, would you say that we're lactose tolerant or lactose intolerant? What would you say and why? If you said that we're lactose tolerant, you'd be correct. Now, the reason is, how are we fed when we're babies? we drink our mother's milk. And this is because we're mammals. However, when you think of other mammals such as bears, once a bear cub is an adult, does it still go back to its mother to get milk and nourishment? No, and I don't think that would actually be a good situation. So why are we different? What happened is we realized that in times of food scarcity, if we drink the milk of other mammals, we could use that for nourishment. And as a result, we evolved and some of us actually have the mutation. And in fact, less of us are lactose tolerant than we are lactose intolerant, which is something I didn't realize until I got a lot older. So what you see on this screen right now is you see DNA, the double helix, it's just horizontal. And this segment right here is showing you the lactase gene. If I have the lactase gene, can I break down lactose? That's correct. However, for most people, once we become adults and we're weaned off of our mother's milk, the gene shuts off. If the gene shuts off and we're no longer producing lactase, can we break down lactose? No. However, for those of us who have the mutation, which affects our promoter, the switch stays on, which means we continue to produce lactase throughout life and we can break down lactose. Now, if you are lactose intolerant, that's not a problem. What can occur is that you can still have dairy products and things like that. You're just unable to break down the sugar of milk itself. What this is showing you is this is an example of lactose. And this lactose, in the presence of lactase, is broken down into galactose and glucose. And because it's breaking down the large molecule of lactose, it's a digestion reaction, which gives us glucose and galactose. Speaking of lactose intolerant, we talked a lot about the science behind it, but what about the symptoms? What are the symptoms if you're lactose intolerant? Well, we know that lactose needs to be absorbed in our intestines, but it's a very big sugar. And what happens is since the lactose isn't broken down, it accumulates and water rushes into the area. So what types of symptoms do you think a person would have that 
it's unable to break down the sugar and it accumulates in their stomach. Well, do these symptoms sound familiar or seem like they make sense? You can have vomiting, you can have diarrhea, you can have bloating or cramping. So what would a person who's lactose intolerant do so that the way they're able, they're still able to enjoy things such as ice cream and other products that have lactose in it? They can drink other types of milk such as almond milk, rice milk, or what they can also do is take lactate. Lactate helps in one very specific way. So first, lacto lactate actually is milk. And if it's milk, that means it has lactose. But if someone's lactose intolerant, that sounds like a problem to me. Let's talk about how this works. So we know that lac refers to milk. And if this is actual milk, it has lactose. What do you think the aid is that helps them break down the lactose in the milk? I think it's a particular enzyme. And what enzyme is that? Lactase. Lactase is in lactate. So the lactase works on the lactose. So by the time someone who is lactose intolerant drinks the milk, it has broken down into glucose and galactose. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making lactose reduced milk. In front of me, I have a number of things that we're going to be using for the experiment on today. I have my filter paper. I have three different glucose strips. I have milk. I have calcium chloride. This is the bottle where the strips came from, which shows you the different colors. My waste speaker and two empty cups, but we'll talk about that later. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what I have in these two tubes. So in the first tube, I have lactase. What is lactase? Lactase is the enzyme that breaks down lactose. However, I have something else called sodium alginate. And sodium alginate, it's a thick solution. It's viscous. Question, have you ever had a milkshake before? Do you know how milkshakes are thicker than normal drinks? Well, Sodium alginate is a thickener and it's used in thickening milkshakes. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the lactase to the sodium alginate to thicken the lactase and get it a greater surface area. I have my lactase and I have my sodium alginate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my lactase tube and I'm going to take a dropper. Now I'm going to squeeze the dropper and then I'm going to insert it into the lactase. I'm going to take up all of the lactase solution in the tube. I'm not going to need this anymore, so it's going to go into my waste beaker. After that, I'm going to take and open my sodium alginate. I'm going to add all of the lactase into my sodium alginate. After I do that, I'm going to close my cap entirely. And looking at it, I can see that it hasn't thoroughly mixed. So I'm just going to flip it upside down to help it with that process because I wanna have a lot of little lactase spheres. Now, how am I going to get the lactase spheres? I'm going to take my sodium alginate lactase mixture and I'm going to drop it into calcium chloride. You know how when there are blizzards outside and a blizzard is going on and they're trying to prepare the roads, you know how they sprinkle that salt on the roads? Well, that salt is calcium chloride. This is just in a liquid form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sodium alginate lactase mixture. I'm going to take my dropper 
I'm going to squeeze my dropper, insert it into the solution, and I'm going to take all of it and put it into the calcium chloride. And what's going to happen is it's going to form little lactase spheres. So I'm actually going to come closer to you to see if you can see the spheres as they start to form. You can kind of see it dropping at an angle. Okay. Now, when you're doing this step, what you want to know is that you don't want to do a stream. And I'll show you what a stream is. You want to drop it into the solution slowly but not very slow if you drop it this slow. It'll take you forever to finish your experiment. But you don't want to do that either. That's a stream. And you're just going to add all of the lactase sodium alginate mix into the calcium chloride. And I'm going to do it one more time. So now I have spheres in the bottom of this solution. And you can actually see them and you can see them at the bottom of the calcium chloride. So now what I need to do is I need the lactase spheres all by themselves. So I'm going to take this cup, I'm going to use a filter and I'm just going to put it gently into the cup and wrap it around. Then I'm going to take the calcium chloride. I'm just going to pour it into the cup. Now, when students do this lab with me, their first question is, can we touch it? Well, you can, but not until you get most of them out because you don't want to contaminate your experiment. So when you look, what you see are little spheres that have formed. You're going to take your cup and you're going to scoop up the lactase spheres. But remember when I said you want to make sure you don't do a stream? This is why. What happens is it forms these long strands, but that doesn't help us with what we're trying to do. Now, do you think now that I've touched this, I'm going to put this back into my cup? No, I'm going to put that in the waste beaker. I'm going to take the lactase spheres I didn't touch, and then I'm going to grab one. Now, when you are looking at these spheres, you can squeeze them or they're a little squishy, but remember they have enzyme on them, so don't put them near your eye. After I finish, I'm going to take this and throw this in the waste beaker. So now I have my lactase spheres and I have my milk. So I need to test first if my milk contains lactose. Now this is whole milk and I know that it has lactose, but in science, you don't just trust me. I need to be able to prove that that's the case. So I have these glucose strips and I've labeled them one, two, and three. And what you can see right now is they're all the same color, so there's no difference. I'm going to use number one first. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the blue side, I'm going to dip it into the milk, and I'm just going to swirl it for 10 seconds. And this is a glucose strip to test the presence of glucose in the milk. Now, should there be glucose in the milk? No, it should be lactose, it should be milk sugar. So I'm going to tap this. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it on its side. Now, I don't see a change occurring and I don't expect you to see a change occur, but just so you can see, the color has not changed. So now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take the milk and I'm going to add the milk to the cup with the lactase. Now, what do you think is going to happen after I do that? So I'm going to let it sit for about 30 seconds to let the lactase act on the lactose in the milk. If you've downloaded our worksheet from the website, you can write down your data on that worksheet. One other thing, this lab is also called Better Milk for Cats. Why do you think it would be called Better Milk for Cats? We're mammals and cats are mammals. So cats, like other mammals, do become lactose intolerant as time goes on. So lactose reduced milk would be better for a cat. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take strip number two. I'm going to take that strip and I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to swirl this strip in the milk that now contains the lactase spheres. I've done that for about 10 times. I'm going to tap it and I'm going to lay it beside the other strip. Now I need to wait 30 more seconds and you see strip one and strip two and you see the different colors that will let you know the presence of glucose. And when you're looking at the colors, what you can see is this is the color if there is no glucose present and the concentration of glucose is increasing and the brown lets you know that there is a high concentration of glucose there. So now, I feel that enough time has passed. I'm going to take strip number three. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to take it, swirl it in the milk for 10 seconds. And then I'm going to set it beside the other strip. Now I can already see that the colors are starting to change, but before I show them to you, I wanna thank you for joining us today to watch this episode on lactose intolerance from DNA Learning Center. Feel free to check out our other YouTube videos and our other lectures. Also, if there's anything that you would like for us to cover, send us a message via Facebook or any other avenue to let us know what you would like to see. So now let's take a look. Strip one, strip two, strip three. Now you can see how strip one is lighter than strip two and lighter than strip three. So what does that mean? It means that even though there was not glucose in the milk before, it is now. Our lactase is working. And just so you can see together, so final question to make sure you understand everything that we've done on today. This is an example. This is a chart that we're going to use to talk about the concentration of lactose versus glucose. As you remember, lactose was the double ringed sugar, the larger sugar. We can say that the green is galactose. And the blue is glucose. When we started the experiment, was the concentration of lactose in the milk high or was it low? If you said high, you'd be correct. But did it stay high? No, it decreased over time. Now, how did you know that the concentration of lactose decreased? Well, 
If you remember what we discussed earlier, lactose breaks down into glucose and galactose. Now, was there glucose in the beginning of our experiment? No. But as time went on, we saw that the color changed in our test strips, our glucose test strips, showing us that the lactase actually broke down the lactose, resulting in the products glucose and galactose. So we were successfully able to make lactose-reduced milk. Thank you for joining me on today, and have a great day.